Welcome back guys to Scott's Coin Channel and today I have for you the complete process of refining SIM cards but we're going to take it one step further. We're going to break it down by average weight since so many of the eBay sellers out there do it by weight not by quantity so you can determine roughly how much potential gold is in what's being sold. Generally with these types of cards unless you're getting them for free it usually isn't worth it and so you'll see here in just a bit why I say that. So I purchased these two bags from an eBay seller for $55 a piece. They're purported to be one pound each and I paid $55 each. So that makes $110 and he threw in some extra looks like film film reel where the uh, SIM cards origin originated from the gold piece on them. So what I did is I took an, 10 of them and weighed them. 10 of them weigh 3.7 grams, so one card is 0.37 grams. Armed with that information, we're gonna weigh everything and see what the total weight is. And that will allow us to determine how many cards we have here. Just checking random different samples. And of note, these are 3G card SIM cards. So the newer ones from the 4G, 5G type of phones, they're significantly smaller. So there's going to be even less gold, but there's also less plastic or fiberglass in these. So now knowing that each card weighs 0.375 grams, the first batch weighs 471 grams, 0.375. There's 1,256 cards here, roughly. Onto the second batch, 467 grams, 1,245 cards, adding together, perfect nice round number, 2501, we'll call it 2,500 cards, more or less. So now on to the actual process, you're gonna need a fish tank air bubbler, an air, air pump. You can pick them up at Walmart or Amazon for $20 or so. I'm gonna put half in each beaker. going to use mur muriatic acid which is hydrochloric acid you can pick that up at Lowe's Home Depot your hardware store I'm gonna fill it just under the top of the cards and then for this batch we're gonna use our hydrogen peroxide 3% use about half of that bottle in each and what will happen is it's going to loosen the foils off of those cards and it does take quite a bit of time if you use too strong of solution of hydrogen peroxide, you can put the gold in solution. So that is dangerous. You have to be very careful. It's a slow process, but it does work. And nearly immediately, within the first few minutes, I guess, it will start turning green. And that is the copper being dissolved into solution from these foils. it start to turn a green color so you're gonna leave it like this for about two or three days sometimes if you have a little bit less it doesn't take as long it really depends on the cards I've had some cards when I do this process where it takes a week so here's 24 hours later you can see most of them are dissolved there's still a little bit left the gold, the gold foil stay in the bottom the solution starts to turn a very dark green or black color. I did three days. You can see the gold foil sitting there at the bottom. So what we're gonna have to do now is of course, separate the cards from the gold foils. So I have a large uh, be commercial coffee filter, double filtered. I'm gonna drain the solution initially you're gonna discard that solution. And then what I ended up doing is rinsing everything just with generic water from my sink. Tap water, doesn't matter at this point, to get the foils. I'm gonna discard the SIM cards after that.
And as I said, I rinsed everything off through my sink, still filtering everything. You have to pick out the gold foils. There are other ways to do it, but this is fairly reliable. So there are our gold foils. I'm gonna let them sit overnight so everything dries out and then we will empty them. A step I normally don't take is I would weigh the gold foils here, but I'm, I'm doing this so you guys can see in the process how much gold is just in the foils, which remember, this is not pure gold. It's pretty high purity gold, but it is not pure gold. Taking the excess filter paper off, and I'm gonna scrape it into my beaker, and then I will scrape it into a crucible that is sitting on a scale properly teared. Not perfect, very minimal loss of gold, if any, that would still be stuck in the filter paper. I will throw that in my pile for later. So out of 2,500 SIM cards, 0.3 grams of foils. That's pretty disappointing. So, you know, gold at 50 or $56 a gram, you can already tell that this is a losing proposition. So I'm gonna move everything over. Next, we're gonna put everything in aqua regia. So that involves using hydrochloric acid, muriatic acid, and two to three mil of 68 to 72% nitric acid. You do not need a lot. And if you use too much, it's gonna make your process really difficult later down the line here. So we're putting the gold in solution. With this little gold and this thin of gold, it doesn't need much heat. You can see even before I turned the stove on, it started going in solution. Don't breathe these fumes. These are nasty. Make sure you're doing it outside. Use, use a respirator if you have one available. So normally, you would filter that solution. And I got sidetracked here. I had people talking to me and <laughs> I, it didn't go as planned. So what I did, you add distilled water to dilute it a little bit. Then I used stump out, which is sodium metabisulfite. And that brings the gold out of solution. You're gonna wanna use stannous chloride if you're new to this process to make sure no gold remains in the solution. So you dip your filter paper in there, check it. I'll get to that in a second. So this is the, the gold plus the impurities that were in that solution. Normally this is not how you would do it. So of course I'm gonna just do this process again, do it the right way here. So I will take our bit of gold here along with the impurities. I'm gonna put it back in the beaker and do the process one more time, put it back in solution, filter the solution, and then we will bring the gold out of solution by using our sodium metabisulf metabisulfite, which is stump out. Now that we have a properly filtered solution, that's what your gold should look like. The clearer, the higher the purity. So we have pretty good, pretty high purity gold here. And as I said before, stannous chloride, if you're new to this process, you need to dip your filter paper in the solution. And if it's high, uh, if there's a lot of gold in it, it's gonna turn black almost immediately. And there's very little gold in this solution. That's what this is telling me. So this stannous is good, but you can see there's a, there's a light brown stain there. And your stannous chloride can go bad. Usually has about a 30 day shelf life or so. So you definitely want to test it using a solution that you know has gold in it to make sure it's good before you do this process now where you bring the gold out of solution. So the solution here, it will turn white then it will turn a brownish black color, and then it will be clear. And in order to make sure no gold is in the solution, you would wanna use your stannous chloride. So that's our gold. There will be a brown mud at the bottom of that solution, and of course we filter it. We're gonna take this filter paper, put it in our crucible, and we will melt it 
using our torch. You can use a propane torch, but it, it's gonna be, it takes a little bit longer because it doesn't quite get hot enough. So I'm using map gas. It's a little bit hotter, makes this process just a little easier. That is, that is our gold. I'm gonna clean it up here using some sulfuric acid, which is just drain cleaner, and a little bit of distilled water, put it on some heat, and let's see what we end up with. Any guesses? Seven point oh seven nine, so not even one tenth of a gram of gold out of a hundred and ten dollars. I would call that a losing proposition. Even if it, uh, if you got it for free, it probably doesn't even offset your chemical cost. Nice little piece of gold can probably be refined even once more, but that's pretty disappointing. So there you go, guys. Let me know in the comments your thoughts, complaints, whatever. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you soon.